Hello, welcome to Prism Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 25 of ASP.NET video series. In this session, we'll learn about the ASP.NET list box control. Before continuing with the session, I strongly recommend to watch parts 22, 23 and 24 of this video series. Just like drop-down list and checkbox list controls, a list box is also a collection of list item objects. Items can be added to the list box in the HTML source at design time or in the code behind file programmatically at runtime. List box supports data binding. For example, a list box can be bound to a database table or an XML file. In the previous sessions of this video series, we have actually learned about binding a drop-down list to an XML file and a database table. Binding a list box to a database table or an XML file is exactly similar. Let's look at an example. Let's flip to Visual Studio. Let's drag and drop a list box control onto the web form. Now we know that a list box is a collection of list item objects and we can add those list item objects in the HTML source at design time. So I can specify the text and value properties here. Let's copy and paste some list item objects so we have some sample data to work with. Okay, so we have a list box which is displaying levels of education, diploma, graduate, postgraduate, doctorate, etc. Now if you look at this list box, it's showing all the available list item objects. Now let's say I want to show initially to the user only two list item objects. Is that possible? Absolutely. And how do we do that? We can make use of the rows property of the list box. So if I select the rows property, look at that. At the moment, since I have four list item objects, it's set to four. Now let's say I want to display to the user only two list item objects within that list box. I set that to two. As soon as I do that, look at that, only two items are displayed and I have a scroll bar. So if I go ahead and run this application now, you know, only two list items will be displayed in that list box and the user can use the scroll bar to scroll up and down to see the other list items. Okay, another important property of the list box is the selection mode property. Now let's understand what we mean by this. By default, the selection mode of a list box is single, which means a user can only select one list item. Look at that, I selected one item and when I try to select another item, you know, it, it clears the selection of the other list item, which means it's a single selection list box. Okay, now is it possible to select multiple items from the list box? Absolutely. First of all, let's remove this rows property. Let's set that to 4. And then we have the selection mode. By default, it's set to single. We can change that to multiple. And then now when we run this, the user should be able to select more than one list item. And if you want to select more than one list item, you have to hold down the control K. So now I am able to select more than one list item object. Now let's create a simple demo where we can actually, you know, retrieve the text value and index of the selected list item object. First of all, let's flip the selection mode of the list box to single. Okay, so if the selection mode of the list box is set to single, then we know that a user can only select one item. Okay, so if that's the case, they, then we can use the selected item and selected index properties to retrieve, uh, you know, the text value and index. We don't have to loop through each list item objects. Let's actually see that in action. Let's drag and drop a button control onto this web form. Okay, so when I click this button, I want to retrieve the selected item. Now, actually, some of the users, I have seen a lot of developers, you know, when the when the list box selection mode is set to single, we know that a user can only select one list item object. If that's the case, there's no reason why you actually want to loop through each list item object within that, you know, list box. You can simply say, you know, if you want the text, so response dot write, I have this list box, list box one dot selected item dot text. That will give us the text of the uh, selected item because we know that there's going to be only one selection made in the list box and we want the text of that. We can use the selected item property. So 
text is equal to that one and then let's put an HTML break so that you know the value and index comes in separate lines so now if I want the value I can use the value property of the selected item and then if I want the index I can simply use the selected index so index is equal to dot selected index since selected index is an integer we need to convert that to string and we don't require this HTML break since that's the last item we are writing to the response stream so now if we run this we should be able to retrieve the selected items text value and index now since this list box is a single selection list box I can only select one item even if I hold down the control key can it select more than one item so if I select diploma and click the button look at that the text is diploma value is one and the index is zero okay now this code can throw a runtime exception because look at that you're not checking you know if the selected item or selected index is minus one okay because of which if I don't select anything okay let me run this once again now there's nothing selected now when I click this button now what's gonna happen selected item property will be null because you haven't selected anything in the list box and then you're trying to retrieve the text property out of it so obviously you know a null reference exception is will be thrown so when I click this button look at that object reference not set to an instance of an object null reference exception okay so how do we solve that there are two ways to solve this one as you can simply say if uh, list box one dot selected item is not equal to null which means if the user has selected something then only try to retrieve the text and value properties of that selected item okay another way to actually test this is to basically use the selected index property okay now the selected index is an integer property now if you don't select anything if you don't select anything then the selected index will be minus one okay on the other hand if you select any of the items within this list box then it will either be zero one two or three depending on which list item you have selected from the list box okay so you can either use selected index or selected item but make sure you do that check if your list box is in a single selection mode because there is a probability that you know the user might not select anything and then when they submit the page you might get null reference exception we don't have this problem if it's a multi selection list box because we use a for each loop and loop through each list item object if the user has not selected anything then the for each loop will not be executed at least once so we don't have that problem there okay so now let's say we turn this list box into a multi selection um, list box and how do we do that we just change the selection mode to multiple and now when we run this the user will be able to select more than one item from the list box but then if you look at the way you have written your code this code only supports the single selection multi you know list box now if I select more than one item by holding down the control key and then click this button look at that I only get the list item the first list item object that I have selected if I remove graduate and if I select diploma and I click this button look at that I only get diploma so if I want every selection that the user has made then I have to loop through each list item object and I have to do this only if the list box is a multi selection list box okay so how do we do that for each list item li in list box one so what we want to do dot items so we want to retrieve the text of that list item and similarly we want the value and the index is a little tricky 
you will use the list box itself dot items dot index of and then to this method you pass in the list object now obviously if you execute this code it's going to return the text value and index of every list item in the list box you want to do this only if that list item is selected so if li dot selected so if the list item is selected then print out the text value and index and to just to separate each list item let's put a line there okay so now let's go ahead and run this now we don't have to actually check for you know selected item null or not because we are looping through each item and if that list item is selected only then try to retrieve the text value and the index of that okay so now I can select multiple list items I click this button and look at that I get the text uh, value and index it's not properly formatted um, all we have to do to fix this is put an HTML break here and another break there so now if we run this it should be properly formatted okay let's select graduate and doctorate I click that now text value index text value index On this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET, C Sharp, and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.